y'all it's just from sunflower dairy and i am out in the greenhouse and guess what time it is it's almost gardening season so i'm out here looking at seed trays and potting soil and pretty much anything that i'm gonna need for seed starting season so it's almost the end of january and the middle of february i'm gonna be starting some cold hardy stuff so we have a couple more weeks and seed starting season will be here so i'm just looking at everything making sure i have everything writing down what i have what i need as far as seed trays soil if you've never tried one of these you have to so this is a soil blocker and I'll explain more about that in a minute but so I'm going through all of my seed trays right here these are the solid seed trays which I like that don't have any holes in it so you can bottom water it's called bottom watering your seeds so you have these here which fit in to the solid tray so that gives you all the little spaces where you would plant your seeds and so you put that in there and instead of watering from the top you're just gonna lift this more gently when there's soil in it so you're not dumping out your soil and your seeds but you would lift up this seed starting tray that fits in the top of this and you would just put your water down in here into the tray and then the bottom of the little seed tray where the soil is that's where the roots are in the bottom of the seed the seed cell of the seed tray so that's where those roots are going to be soaking up that water and that way the top of your seeds are not going to be completely saturated in water which a lot of times if you have ever started seeds a lot of times you'll notice if you get your seed trays too wet then a lot of times they take a really long time to dry out which sometimes that is a problem because sometimes either your seeds will start rotting or the top of the seed starting soil depending on what you use depending on if you use like a compost or an actual seed starting soil or like some sterile soil sometimes you will start getting fungus on the top of your seed tray if they stay completely saturated for a really long amount of time and they aren't able to dry out in between now you do want seedlings to you know stay moist while they're germinating but after that if they're not able to dry out in between waterings then the plant and the roots will sometimes rot so you want to make sure that you know you want to make sure that you know they have a spot where you're not completely saturating them so they're if you bottom water then they're just soaking up what they need as they need it and then it's not staying completely drenched in here and then you're able to let the seed trays dry out when they need to in between waterings and also another way to avoid that is getting a fan so getting a fan which gives airflow so you're getting good airflow you want airflow so that fungus is not able to form on the top of your soil but so I like these trays for these seed starting inserts and then I also like the solid trays for the soil blockers they fit perfectly in here you just well when you're using a soil blocker you get a tub of dirt and you want to make sure that that soil or dirt is really you want it really wet 
not like so wet but just enough like when you squeeze it it like actually like stays together so you'll fill this up with your soil and then after you get your soil filled up in these then you'll put them in a tray and then you'll just go like that and then you'll have your row of soil blocks so I also like these as well for the soil blocks and then also these inserts right here so I am making a list of seed trays and soil blockers also like if I'm doing something like this and I have plants that are getting really big sometimes I have to up pot them in something like this something that's bigger that's gonna you know some sometimes your plants get so big that this is not going to be enough for your plant because it's gonna start running out of soil and nutrients if it starts getting too big so that's why a lot of times you want to make sure that you're looking at exactly when you're supposed to be starting your seeds so say a seed packet says that you're supposed to start those seeds six weeks before your last frost date you want to make sure you're counting back from your last frost date to see actually when six weeks is so you're not starting it way too early and a good way to figure out what your last frost date is is you'll type in your zip code or your town where you're located and you'll type that in type in last frost date and a lot of times that will pop right up for you if you look that up on the internet so that's a good way to figure that out but so i'm out here i'm planning i'm planning getting a plan together for seed starting season i'm making my list and i'm also out here looking at the greenhouse kind of organizing things getting things ready you know making sure everything's all nicely set up and i know where everything is and then making sure that i have everything and if i don't have everything making a list and making sure that i'm going to have what i need when i need it all right, all, I am going to get back to what I was doing, but thank you for watching and have a blessed day.